Welcome to the Grow My Cleaning Company podcast with your host, Mike Campion. If you are passionate about the cleaning industry, you are in the right place. Love what you hear? Spread the word and tell the cleaning world this is the place to be. Want more? Check out www.growmycleaningcompany.com for free online video trainings, free ebook downloads, free blog posts, and of course, all the podcast episodes. Everything you need to grow your cleaning company is at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. And now, on with the show. Welcome to the Grow My Cleaning Company podcast, where I coach owners of cleaning companies every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on anything and everything related to building and growing cleaning companies. If that is you and you are committed to growing your cleaning company, you know you can go to growmycleaningcompany.com and get everything you need to create the cleaning company you've always wanted. If you want to be a guest on the show or if you've got any questions or feedback or things you want me to answer live on the show, you can give us a call at 480-648-5149 or reach out to our producer Natalie at nat, N-A-T, at growmycleaningcompany.com. We love hearing from you, Cleaning Nation. That said, today we are talking with Neil Parekh from Made This. Made This serves the Orange County, San Francisco, and LA, Los Angeles area with residential and short-term cleaning services. If you want to reach out to Neil and his team, you can hold them at www.madeidthis.com. Neil, welcome and say hello to Cleaning Nation. Thanks Thanks so much, much, Mike. Excited to be here. Excited to have you, my friend. And I got to Cleaning Nation, I got to let you in on a little secret. Uh, As we were chatting beforehand... I was getting a little bit of feedback on Neil. I'm like, oh my gosh, I am so good. I, he's got so much good stuff. Uh, or His story is fascinating to me already. So we're going to jump into that. Uh, Neil, I'll let you start. How'd you get into the cleaning business? How'd you find um, Cleaning Nation? And what's your life look like these days? Yeah, absolutely, Mike. And thanks for the intro there. It's very flattering. I'm blushing already. Um, my, I started Made This about three years ago uh, with a focus specifically on just the residential cleaning market. Uh, we started in Los Angeles. That's kind of home base still, and that's where I'm from, actually. Um, since then, we expanded to Orange County, which is right south of Los Angeles, as well as um, San Francisco. So uh, pretty good coverage of the main cities in California. Uh, further plants expand in different places, and what we do is general residential cleaning, uh, a bit of commercial cleaning as well as it comes to us, and uh, short-term rental cleaning. So that is the target market right now. Well, gosh, I've got 107 questions, but I'm going to I'm gonna keep it down to like two or three. First of all, how, <laughs> what made you decide to kind of, because I get the LA, um, let's see what you have, LA and Orange County, very similar, real close together. They're within driving distance. I get that. San Francisco, for those of you that aren't, for, you know, we got some kind of global listeners, San Francisco Gosh, that's a six, seven, eight hour drive, I think, from LA or an hour flight. What made you what what made you decide to branch out like that? <laughs> a couple of things. Um, one, selfishly, I love San Francisco, so it'd be a good excuse for me to go up there and just hang out and say, well, I'm here in business, so I, I have to hang out in San Francisco. Um, two is we actually had um, an inquiry from a larger property manager up there, um, specifically for kind of our short-term rental side. So because of that, it was a good leg to get into the San Francisco market and have immediate business and then just expand from there. Um, and, you know, it's all in California still, so business climate and all the rules and regulations we kind of know already. So it wasn't too much of a reach, um, definitely much more of a reach than it was for us to go to Orange County since, you know, you're hiring completely different cleaners and staff up there. Uh, but I think it was actually very important because now we actually know how to expand to a completely different market and uh, kind of repeat that. So. For me, it was a bit of a test bed, and uh, luckily, you know, we had business right when we got there. But it's a test bed to figure out how to further expansion from here. Well, and then the flip side is a uh, dirty little, dirty little secret of Neil. He is not in Orange County or San Francisco right now. Where are we talking to you from, my friend? Yeah, not even in Los Angeles. Actually, I'm currently in Budapest in uh, Hungary, Europe, right now. Uh, I will probably be here for a couple months. Uh, for the last year, I've been on the road traveling as well as operating my business full time. So, yeah, my, my background, I worked in finance for a few years before this. I started a cleaning company while I was still there. But a year ago is when I left that company <laughs> and decided to do uh, made this full time. So that's when I hit the road. Um, at that point, we were stable enough where I could actually bring staff on, which is kind of how I was able to do it. Um, so I lived a bit in South America, Central America. And now I'm over in Europe. So I got here about maybe three weeks ago, and I'll plan to stay here for a couple months and just working full time from here. All right. So you've got, you just divided Cleaning Nation into two camps. The first camp is I hate this guy and I want to punch him right in his smug little face for traveling. <laughs> I'm working like a chump. 
the uh, the more evolved half of Clean Nation is going. How on, I must I must make this man my new best friend, and I must learn his secrets. So, <laughs> tell me, tell well, happy to share everything. So how on God's green earth, I hope I'm not getting punched though. That would be helpful. Wait, what's that? I said I'm hoping uh, I don't get punched though. That'd be great. Another well, half of Clean Nation. So I think we've got <laughs> that is not a hotbed for us. We've got probably less than five percent of our listeners in Budapest. So I think you're safe for now. But um, <laughs> you can make it up to all of us by giving us a little heads up. How did you uh, – I mean because the cleaning business is a tough one, right? There's some businesses that lend themselves to virtual work. Uh, you know, A lot of Silicon Valley online stuff really kind of lends itself to that. Cleaning is not one of them. Not that it's not possible, but it, it's a little trickier. How did you – how have you done that? Do you like it? Do you recommend it? Give us a little feedback, and then I promise we'll get into coaching. I'll give you some love. Yeah, awesome. So uh, first of all, to answer your last question, I absolutely love it. Um, I, I don't know if it's something I would do forever. Um, I plan to do this for maybe <clears throat> another year, and I absolutely love traveling. Um, so I kind of wanted to create a business which combines my passion of traveling along with actually building a business. And it's weird, I guess, you, you wouldn't think a cleaning business allowed was that. Uh, in reality, it kind of does because I realized most of what I was doing was phone calls and emails for the most part. The only time I'd have to go somewhere in person would be if I'm trying to hire a new cleaner. So that would be the first piece of advice is I'm sure most cleaning companies are constantly hiring new people and managing the cleaners. Um, with that... I, I brought on someone to do the hiring for me and the actual management of the cleaners for me. Um, so because of that, I was able to be free of my obligation to be anywhere face-to-face. Now, this is probably different for people who maybe have commercial accounts um, where they need to physically go initially to do the sale. Um, what we do is residential cleaning and pure online marketing. So because of that, customers find our website, they book. Um, you know, We assign a cleaner to it, and we send the cleaner to the different jobs and communicate with the customer over phone call or email. We're almost never doing in-person quotes unless it's a very large job. Um, so that kind of made my life easier, too. It's just the type of cleaning that we were doing where it's almost all online. So when I was working, I realized that everything I was doing was basically phone calls and emails, um, and that's generally something you can do from the road. So my schedule has changed. For example, where I'm right now is nine hours ahead of California. So I usually get up and do my work here when it's a bit quieter. But then, you know, from 5 p.m. on, I still have to be on call on my phone and check my emails just to make sure everything is okay. But again, it's mostly phone calls and emails is what I'm doing. uh, And that's what I was doing for the last three years. So it's not that much different, actually. All right, beautiful. I love that feedback. And before we hit the uh, the coaching piece, one last question, just because I know a lot of Cleaning Nation out there. I don't want too many of them to be like, well, that's him. About how many employees do you have and how many do you have? did you have when you went um, kind of rogue and went and did your own thing? Because, you know, obviously if there's two sure. employees, that might, be a tough, that might be a tough transition. If you've got more, it might be a little easier. So, sure. So let me divide it up. There's operation employees and the cleaners. So cleaners, um, at this point, maybe we have around 20 to 25 cleaners. Mm-hmm. Um, on and off, some do part-time, some work one day a week, some do full-time. Um, and in terms of operation staff, at this point, we have – one uh, about four operation staff and then me so with me it'd be five okay perfect so that's, yeah. that's a i appreciate you sharing that because i didn't want uh, i didn't know but um if the case was as it is we're like hey we're you know we've got 20 30 people total or closer to 30 people total that's a pretty reasonable deal right it's not like you've got 600 employees and it's not like you've got two that's that's a lot of i think that's a lot of cleaning nation okay any other uh, just yeah. this is so fascinating i want to make sure i don't miss anything any other fascinating stories or anything you want to share before we move on and uh turn the table and i'll see if i can help you some yeah let me think i mean just just to talk about the the kind of traveling and working thing when i first did that we only had one other operations person who was actually located in los angeles to handle any face-to-face type things needed and me so you really don't need much to go and travel. It's just, you know, I, I would recommend having one person who actually lives there who you could kind of rely on to do certain things or meet, in, meet cleaners or have to go to meetings if needed. Um, but when I first started traveling, it was just me and one other person and kind of expanded from there. So, you know, it's definitely something that's doable. It's not crazy hard to do. Um, so if anyone's actually thinking about that, I'd say just bite the bullet and do it. So stupid question. I'd love that. I get that you only need one cleaner, but then what happens when you move from one to zero and that guy quits and you're in Bangladesh? How do you deal with that uh, issue? So I, you're right. I should declare for that one operations worker and multiple cleaners. Okay. Um, so by that, I mean I, one person to manage the cleaners and one person to you know go hire new cleaners as needed and meet them face to face, that type of thing. So uh, for cleaners, had, I, you know, yeah, left, maybe it was around 10 or so at the time. If that guy had left, would have you felt comfortable um, – quote unquote, replacing him or hiring someone new from afar? Or do you think you would have had to gone home at that point to at least get the new guy set up? 
That's a good question. I probably would have gone home just because I, I would care about business enough that I would want to be there during that rocky period. So I would have gone home, I think. You, you definitely could have done it remotely because, honestly, I, I think you need mainly the person to do the hiring part because I was still managing the cleaners from afar, still managing the customers, still talking to customers, still emailing. Uh, but I probably would have headed back to answer okay. that question. And not to recommend this, but Howard Hughes, I read uh, his biography, if you ever have a chance, he's but he's fascinating. The guy that um, – uh, did Hughes Aircraft and you know was a billion, you know one of the first billionaires in the world uh, and died an eccentric crazy old man but he had someone running his because he wanted to make movies and do all this stuff but his fortune was built on a tool company that was a hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue and the guy that he that ran that tool company for him that was basically his right hand man and did everything for him he had never met in his whole life so. Really? Yeah. Not, not recommending <laughs> yeah. that. That well, dude was insane and playing at a whole different level than myself and probably most of the people listening. But um, just to take what you're saying to a crazy proportion, it is possible. Um, maybe not for everybody, but it, it can be done. All right. Neil, thank you so much for sharing so much of your, uh, you know, allowing me to kind of pick your brain for so long. Let's turn the tables. What one specific thing can I help you with today, my friend? <laughs> Yeah, sure. I appreciate it, Mike. And I'm very happy to, uh, excited for the chance to pick your brain on this, too. So a lot of things, um, well, I guess one particular thing I'm struggling on is trying to deal with the operations stuff. So I mentioned I had uh, a few people who are working for me in operations as well as the cleaners. I'm kind of curious on what you might recommend in terms of setting up the operations to best manage the cleaners, to best manage the customers, um, how that should look. Um, so maybe, maybe just talking through how the actual setup of the company should look like on an internal basis. Okay, so that's... A huge question. Let me try and break it down to something more specific that we can actually kind of help you on on a single call. So first of all, yep. I wish that, well, maybe not because then I'd be out of business, but I, a lot of people come to me with like, how do I market? Where's the best way to get clients? Or how's the best way to bid? Or how's the best way to run my operations? And the, the only responsible answer I can give to that is, well, let me ask you about a dozen questions about what your goals are for the business, for you personally, how you want to live. Um, what this business is, what, how you want it to serve you, uh, and then I can answer that. So let me preface by saying, first of all, most of the people are not in touch with, and they come to me in a lot of pain in terms of lifestyle or money or both, and the big foundation I have to lay for them first, and we almost have to kind of go backwards, is you got to understand this business, you created it to serve you, not the other way around. But so many times I talk to people that had just written a blank check to their business, emotionally, financially, time, relationally, whatever that business needs, they pay. If it's, it doesn't matter if it's time away from their kids, they'll pay it. If it's time working when it's probably not even good for their physical health, they pay it. If it's money that they don't have, mm -hmm. they pay it, which is fine if you're clear on what the business is supposed to be giving to you. But most of the time when they're in that kind of backwards relationship with their business, the business is firmly in charge and they become its servant. So first of all, I want to say congratulations on living. Sounds like to a large degree, your business is doing a good job of serving the, the goals and needs of Neil personally. Neil's not serving the business. So that's, that's the foundation. If you don't have that straight, there's nothing I can help you with. And the fact that you do have that straight puts you so far ahead of most of the people I talk to, I want to congratulate you. That said, the way that I would coach you to run your operations is going to be very different than somebody else who says, you know what? I love my employees and I just want to spend time with them and I want to create a lot of jobs and I want to be in the mm. community. That's great. There's nothing wrong with that. But that operational org chart or how things are going to run is totally different than Neil's. It says, I want to travel and I want to be as light touch as possible and I just want this thing to produce me money. Um, that's fine too. Nothing wrong with that. But that org chart and that is going to look very, very different than uh, the first case. And there's an infinite amount of other cases of different people with families or without families that want to travel, that don't want to travel, that want money, that want prestige, that want to sell, that want to give it to their kids. So it really kind of, kind of boils down into your goals. So I can try and give you a bad generic answer or we can talk a little bit about um, where you want to be specifically or how you want this business to serve you and then maybe come up with a quick answer at the end. Yeah, and I think that's a, a very good point. You're right. There's different people want to run in different ways, right? Some people want to explode and make it the biggest thing possible. Some people don't want to do that at all. So I, I completely understand that the operations will change. So for me, I think you kind of hit on the head. Ideally, I'd like to be lower touch as, as much as possible, and I'd like to personally only focus on the aspects of the business which I like, and the aspect of the business which I like is just the marketing and sales part. So the rest of the operations, I kind of want to streamline as much as possible and have that be smooth. And that way, I don't have to deal with that part. So it, it would be 
how can they set up the operations to be as automated as possible and as hands off for me? Okay. So the the two things I'll give, and this is kind of thirty thousand foot coaching, right? We'd have to talk uh, often. Mm-hmm. I have to get a lot more information to give you some specifics. But from the information I've got, there's the big overreaching thing I would do, and it sounds like you've already you already started down this. So I just want to encourage you that you're on the right track is systems because you've either got to have great people or great systems. If you have great systems, you can have average people and they're easy to interchange. If you have poor or no systems, you have to hire and keep really good people uh, because they're going to have the good systems in their head and they're going to be able to make the same decisions that you have. So first and foremost, Hmm. I would have systems, 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 and systems. So like, you know, not beating you up or anything, but if I were going to leave town, I would want to have a system for what if my one guy that's my only administrative employee quits What's the system and process that's going to happen? How would he quit? How would he leave? How how would I deal with, uh, you know, even if I flew back, there's going to be a period of days or maybe a week where I wouldn't be there. So what's that system look like? Uh, And I would probably have two or three backup plans. So one of the cleaners or two of the cleaners or a couple of the cleaners, I would be vetting hopefully for that job and say, okay, well, you're going to step up and be that interim. I'd probably have a third person outside of the company, like a a talent person that I could bring in. He was kind of at the ready and already trained. So I kind of was planning for all that stuff. So to live the lifestyle that you want with low touch, uh, especially an operation system, when what sounds like you do lots, you do a lot of churn, right? Instead of 10, $2,000 a month jobs commercially, you might do two or 300, $200 jobs. Is that fair? Yep. Okay. That's, That's exactly, exactly right. right. Yeah. So you need just like you, and you've identified a little bit, you need you need better systems, right? If I've got 20 customers and they pay me a lot and I'm physically there, I don't need a lot of systems because if anything goes wrong, I can just handle it. But what you're doing is you just churn, 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 right? Your, your whole business model is attracting a wall of the right customers, giving that low drag experience where they can just boom, boom, boom in and out. They're probably not going to have a relationship. They're probably not going to be sharing core values. You're not going to have a deep relationship. You do a service, they pay your bill and you move on to the next one and you repeat a thousand times. Nothing wrong with that business mar- business model. It's just going to take a tremendous amount of systems that are not employee based. Um, so you've gotten the first step by saying it's not me based, right? Neil doesn't have to be there. He may have to answer some phones and do some emails, but he does not have to shake hands and look eyeball to eyeball. The second layer is to make sure that you're almost like a McDonald's, right? I promise you, if you you know when the guy the fry guy at McDonald's quits, it is zero disruption to their business because they've got systems on how to make sure that that guy leaves without stealing anything or breaking anything. They've already got 20 employees that are ready to take that job. They've got 100 applicants every week. They've got a whole system, so it's like no problem. That widget's out. We just stick another widget in there, um, and they're prepared for it. So I would really try and take out dependence on any certain person and really just have. A group of systems, and that's what you're paying McDonald's for, right? They give you the big, I'm sure it's electronic now, but I picture this massive operations manual that they hand you, and anyone that can speak English and is willing to follow directions, or not English, whatever whatever language the operations manual's in, can pretty much, every question is answered, they can handle it, and if one guy leaves, and you know, they might run a $3 million business making two three $300,000 a year at a McDonald's with the highest paid guy making 42000 bucks plus a little benefits or something, and if that guy quits, I promise mm-hmm. you they got a system to replace him. So long story short, without so when you say systems, systems, is that systems, systems. Is, do you mean kind of manuals and stuff in case if someone leaves, all of their knowledge is written down? Is that what you mean by systems? Well, yeah. Ideally, you've got the knowledge that you're reining up, so it's all contained in those manuals. And again, if anyone can read, yeah. So generally, the systems are so good. Not that, that you're not constantly improving them and you can get a little bit of feedback from whatever person's in that job. That's fine, but <clears throat> you want to be at that kind of minimum standard of you can run the company just with that manual. And again, there might be you know an $8 cleaner that is just never going to be a manager, might not be able to do that. But instead of needing to get a really good manager that really understands you and that really understands your business and that you know it's a special human being, this unicorn that you got to fly home and find, you've got a system of here's exactly what that guy looks like or gal. Here's what their age should be. Here's what their competency should be. We've got a disc profile they're going to take, and here's what that should look like. Um, you know, so you, you're very clear on here's where you would find this person. Here's the five or ten that we've got in the bullpen at all times. So you've kind of got, and it takes a while to create those systems, but when you have them, you can really be what we've been talking about—that light touch of being afar, either emotionally, mentally, or physically, like you are—and let the business run. And you just kind of have all these potential catastrophic events of the key person leaving. It's systematized and you're ready for it and you've got step B, C, D, and E and step F is you flying home as opposed to plan B is you flying home. 
Gotcha. 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 That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and I, I have the systems loosely written down in random different places or in my own head. So I agree with you. I think, I think the systems actually need to be a little bit more processized. Yeah, and with that's obviously for any business, but with the business that you, the business model that you've chosen and that serves you, you're, you know, with everyone else that's really important with you, that's kind of the only business, right? If you're not going to be there, the systems better be there. So for you, you know, it's right. instead of, you know, it's on, not on your top 10, that would be your top one. Okay, uh, man, we are going to do a, a legendarily long podcast. If I don't turn around and hit the lightning round and let you get some opportunities to speak back to Cleaning Nation, here's three quick questions. I have full confidence you're going to give three amazing answers. Question number one, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Uh, the best piece of advice is that it's better to try and fail than just not do it again. So don't fall into paralysis by analysis. Just do it and see how it goes. Yeah. One of the things I wanted to say earlier, which tags on right to what you're saying is, if you want to figure out, people ask me, how do I learn how to travel or be away from my business? And the answer is to travel and be away from your business. At some point, you're just going to have to do it. Um, yeah. Great answer, man. Question two, what's the biggest mistake you've made in the cleaning business that maybe we can learn from? Sure. Um, I'd say it's not getting rid of the workers who don't work out quicker. Um, oftentimes, this is being too nice or giving them too many chances. Um, I should have just been a little bit harsher and got rid of them as opposed to making my reputation go down or losing a lot of money because of them going, going forward. Yeah, I've said this before. In my hundreds of hires and fires, zero people I've let go that I go, ah, you know what? Dang it, I should have waited. I, I, that was too soon. Yeah. Never, never, not once. And I would say 90% of the times I got, I went, why? What took me so long? Why didn't I do that earlier? And then what really makes you crazy is when your yeah. other employees come around you and go, man, what took you so long? That guy was awful. And you're like, well, why did you know? <laughs> then it really Yeah. <laughs> It, it's a painful thing to do to let someone go, but it's definitely better for the business if it's needed. Yeah, it's kind of a Band-Aid rip thing. It's it's not the most fun, but man, it feels so much better afterwards when you know that. And for both people, right? That person wasn't working out. They weren't enjoying their time with your company. So it's not like you're devastated. It's not a win-lose. It's a win-win. They really are freed up to find an opportunity yep. that's going to suit them better. All right, Neil, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for showing your passion, your desire to grow, and your story. I love your vibe. I appreciate you. I know Clean Nation appreciates you. If you want to check out Neil's show notes page and get everything you need to grow your cleaning company, you know it's all, growmycleaningcompany.com. You can leave your questions, your comments, your rude remarks. I will see you there. Congratulations. You are now 16% smarter. Still can't get enough cleaning goodness? Go to www.growmycleaningcompany.com for more of the good stuff. Ever want to be rich and famous? Owners of cleaning companies as well as industry experts can apply to be featured on the show by emailing our producer Natalie at support at growmycleaningcompany.com. Until then, don't miss out on all the latest cleaning industry loving at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. Check it out now.